One of my favorite anime of all time is Madoka Magica, and that love comes from contrast, primarily from the tone and presentation of the first few episodes as a generic if well executed magical girl series, to the sudden and abrupt left turn into brutal deconstruction. As well as that of the art style, between the main character's slice of life and moe style presentation, to some of the best representations of eldritch and lovecraftian beings in any form of media with the exception of perhaps the source material. It was just so shocking and well executed that it left me with a sensation unlike any other anime that has since been able to evoke in me. That is, until now. There is a new anime, one that I have only heard mentioned once among all of the anime YouTubers and podcasts that I consume, that deserves to be watched by as many people as possible. I am talking about Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss is phenomenal, from background artwork to the animation to the story and the world that has been revealed so far. It has grabbed my attention and steadfastly refused to let go. I earlier compared it to Madoka and this is not without reason. And like it, I feel that the less explanation it gets, the better experience it is. So I implore you, please go watch this with as little information as possible. There will, of course, be some minor spoilers for the first few episodes going forth. Made in Abyss starts off by following Riku, a, a prepubescent orphan exploring the Abyss, a large sinkhole of unknown depth filled with fantastical artifacts and creatures, looking for relics to pay for her room and board at the orphanage she lives in. Already at the first episode, we can tell that despite the cheerful and charming nature of the art, there is something sinister about the Abyss. Case in point, early on in the episode, while digging for artifacts, she comes across a human skeleton, hands clasped in prayer, and aside from some initial surprise, she treats it as if it is an everyday thing, which we learn in the later episodes both corpses and death are in the abyss. Then comes the encounter with the Crimson Splitjaw, a large flying snake-like creature that chases her and nearly consumes her, which further sets off alarms when she remarks that they are usually found deeper in the abyss, thus cluing us into the fact that the further you go, the worse it gets, though how worse is not fully understood until later. Thankfully, before our protagonist can get the mommy special, a sudden laser beam from a seemingly inactive robot boy saves her. Thus, with the help of some friends, she sneaks him into her room in her orphanage where she awakens him by strapping him to an electric chair she has because her room used to be a torture room, with implements still available. Thus, we are introduced to our second protagonist, an amnesiac robot boy later christened Reg. Here we get some further explanation on the world, how after the abyss was discovered and how the deeper one goes into it, the more valuable and useful artifacts are found, a sort of gold rush started leading to the foundation and rapid growth of a town around it. But as you go deeper, the abyss predictably gets more dangerous, not only going down, but once one starts elevating upwards, the curse of the abyss begins to manifest, first as a general sense of nausea, and further escalating the deeper you return from, symptoms ranging from bleeding, physical mutation, and even flat out death. The abyss is so deadly in fact that the orphanage caters seemingly exclusively to orphans of cave divers who have either died on the job or simply leave them there when they expect it to be their last dive. Rico being a prime example, the legendary cave diver Liza the Annihilator being her mother, and the reason for the plot of the manga and now anime as a whole to start off. And speaking of the anime, the visuals look absolutely stunning. Characters are in the most part drawn in a cute child friendly way akin to Madoka Magica, but the creatures are drawn in a style that evokes that of studios such as Ghibli. While still at the upper limits of the abyss, all the creatures shown thus far are look phenomenal and beautiful, especially the ones in episode 5 who names I won't mention due to being spoilers in and of themselves, but are equally beautiful and horrifying. Made in the Abyss is simply put captivating in a way I haven't felt for a long, long time, and I hope it keeps up its momentum and genuine enjoyment it has given me so far. Go watch this anime. So far, it's my favorite of the season. And that's it for my thoughts on Made in the Abyss. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, there's a button for that too. Feel free to subscribe and ring the bell, comment with whatever comments and criticism you have, and I'll put a link in the description to where you can watch Made in the Abyss on Anime Strike. I know it's not very popular, sir. I know it's not a very popular service, but if you are a member of Amazon Prime, you do have a one-week trial to try it out. And I say that it is a good use to watch these five episodes, or just wait until the series is out in its entirely and just I don't know, um, marathon it, I guess. 
but I would be willing to, but I know that, um, the Bible words brain speak, but I know that once my trial is up, I'm going to continue with it because this anime, I really, really want to see where it goes. And if things I've heard from manga readers are to be, un, uh, to be believed, things get much, much worse. And that just apply, that just appeals to me greatly. But yeah, so that's it for this episode thanks for watching um feel free to check out my let's play channel where i'm currently playing dark souls 2 scholar of the first sin and i also have a full let's play up of dark souls 1 i'm going through the entire series plan on following this up with dark souls 3 and later with bloodborne but yeah that's it and um all right see y'all later